Thanks for staying with us and welcome to Mission. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to FCDO. In tonight's edition of Mission, we're taking you to Nabugu Bele in the Sisala East Municipality of the Upper West Region to explore the impact of early sex on the education of teenage girls. Here's a report by Stanley Niblero. <laughs> This is how youth groups in parts of northern Ghana take part in processions to funerals of persons regarded as warlords or warriors in the community. While mourning the dead, the funeral also serves as an avenue where the elderly men take advantage of young girls. The men sexually exploit the girls impregnating and truncating their education in the process. That is the ordeal of Berikisu. Berikisu lives with her parents at Nabukubele, a predominantly Muslim community in the Sisala East municipality of the Upper West region. Despite her parents' strict supervision, the teenager gave in to influence from men in the community and had her virginity broken. A month on, she began to experience symptoms of pregnancy, and further tests proved positive. This was when the 17-year-old was in first term in junior high school, Form 3. For Berikisu, the incident that led to her pregnancy is still fresh in her mind. They are playing dance here, and I went there. So when I went there, he told me that I should go to his house and I, I also, that day I don't want to go to any, anywhere, so he convinced me uh, and I went there. That's my, that's where I even broke my virginity. School authorities at the Nabugubele Junior High allowed Berikisu to return to school with her pregnancy till she wrote the basic education certificate exams in October this year. The action by school authorities was hinged on the Ghana Education Services reintegration policy which enables pregnant and breastfeeding mothers to return to school to pursue education. Uh, even considering her academics records in JHS 1 and then JHS 2, she did well until the time she got pregnant and dropped out. But through uh, the efforts of the PTA and then the parents and then the teachers, she was able to brought back to the school and she wrote her BC uh, exams. District Chief Executive for Sisala East, Fusheni Yakubu Batong, who is also a trained teacher, alluded to the phenomenon. My first experience as a head teacher, I met a situation like that. The child became pregnant. The parents wanted me to sack the girl from school. I encouraged the girl to come to school throughout. He came and came and wrote her BEC, completed, and then later on, she got placement. She has progress completed, and she has gone to do a degree course. If I had sacked that lady, by now, the lady would have dropped out of JSS. Perikisu comes from one of the poorest families in the community. Her biological mother, Sadia, an illiterate, had wished her daughter grows to become a great person to influence society. But now, maintains that her daughter's current condition leaves her with much regret. <laughs> I have been providing my daughter's needs all the time, but she will not obey my instruction. Now I feel I have lost my investment. She said attempts to introduce her daughter to family planning methods at a young age failed. I have been warning my daughter to be extra careful about having an affair with men. I even suggested to her to use contraceptives, but she resisted, claiming that she is abstaining from sex, but not knowing that she had deceived me. 
Berikisu is not the only teenager in this situation. Each year, the Nabugubela Junior High School records averagely three cases of teenage pregnancy and school dropouts. Head teacher of the school said the incident, like Berikisu's, often results in child marriages. In Nabugubele, transactional sex is common and female pupils who cannot abstain from sex resort to the use of family planning to address their reproductive health needs. Uh, the family planning issue, most of our girls, they feel shy to discuss those things, but we know some of, some of them are on family planning. So what we have done is to engage uh, the health personnel in the community to talk to them, counsel them with regards to uh, uh, their sex life. In three months, Berekisa's status in society will change because she will become a mother. But the consequences associated with motherhood have already begun weighing her down. I feel that now the world is too much. Now I have learned. I even think that whenever they are talking to me, I feel that they hurt me. But now I know that they like me. She has regrets. Now I regretted that now I am pregnant. This is where my suffering begins. Her dream to further her education to the senior high school next year appears to be crushing and her future filled with uncertainties. I will try my possible best for my education. I will not leave it. The district chief executive has assured the mission team that in order to discourage the interruption in the education of adolescent girls in the municipality, a forum will be held to engage stakeholders on the enforcement of bylaws which have already been gazetted. Many mothers are now going into farming. They tend to use their girls to their girls' boyfriends to work for them, which means they are also endorsing the, uh, the relationship between the boys and the girls. And like I said, if we em enforce our bylaws at all, every community, we should be able to reduce this uh, menace. We have made a gazette, and uh, the only thing is we need to now put our heads together, bring in the GES, all, all the stakeholders together, so that we can all sit, think about it, and then see how we can put the enforcement. So I would say by the close of the year, we should be able to meet. The promotion of girl-child education is a component of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4, which is achievable by the year 2030. However, the honors lies on stakeholders to work towards removing barriers that impede the girl-child growing to become irresponsible adult. That insightful report there by Stanley Niblewo is how we wrap up on Mission tonight. Mission is supported by Star Ghana Foundation with thanks to FCDO. After the break, there's more news right here on News 360.